Hello and welcome to video 20 in my Rigging in Maya series. We have the model ready to go, so let's start to look at building our quadruped rig. In this video we will investigate creating the driver skeleton, but this won't be used to directly affect the model. Instead think of this as the actual bones of the dog, so these will instead drive other systems, so in this case it will be the ribbons. These will then act like the muscles, which will in turn manipulate the skin. Taking this approach will give us much more flexibility with this rig and make animation easier and more organic. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that you can now download all the source files for this and all my other courses from my Cube Brush, Coffee, Gumroad and ArtStation stores. So there's plenty of options out there for you. You can find links on the screen and in the description below. I also wanted to tell you about the Ant CGI Club. Joining the club is a way for you to help support the future of this channel as it will allow me to dedicate more time to creating new content just for you. But that's not all. You can also earn yourself exclusive rewards. These include all the course assets, models, rigs and custom made scripts as well as access to the members only area of the Ant CGI Club Discord server. You can also claim a 10% discount on all Ant CGI merchandise. There are two ways you can join. The first is to simply click the join button below this video and become a member of this YouTube channel. The second is to head over to my Patreon page and support me there. Alternatively, you can just visit the link on the screen or in the description below to find out more. Okay, let's start adding some joints. Open the joint tool options. Just reset these. I'm going to use the default settings this time round, so we'll be working with X pointing down the joint. Let's also try to use projected centering too. The idea behind this is it will detect the middle of the model for you, essentially saving you time as you try to position the joints manually. Now this doesn't always work, so let's see what happens. Before we start to create the skeleton, we just need to use some reference to guide the joint placement. Anything will do, and a quick Google search will quickly give you something you can use. It's important the joints are placed correctly, so the dog will animate in a more natural way. Let's start with the front leg. We need five joints initially. This starts with the scapula and works its way down. There we go. So we can see the projected centering has got a little confused here. It worked with the body and the lower leg. In fairness, this is probably down to the shape of the model. To be honest, I prefer to build my joint chains manually anyway, so I'm going to delete this. Although projected centering does work much better with a standard biped type rig, especially with fingers. I'm going to hold X, which will snap to the grid and create a single joint at the world root. Change the radius to make it a little bigger and then move this so it's roughly in the right position. There will do. So I'm going to press Ctrl and D to duplicate it and move it down. Maybe more up here. So I'll just create another copy down here. And another here. And I'm using the wireframe to help guide the placement so it's in the middle. Finally, another one here. Because we work from the side view, all these joints are still aligned down the middle, which is what I wanted. Let's parent these to each other now to create the chain. We have the main leg here. I'm not going to parent it to the scapula just yet. I want to maintain this straight line because it will help later when we add the IK. So let's move them over so they are in the middle of the front leg. I'll adjust the scapula too. 
And finally, parent this joint to the scapula. OK, so that's one leg done, but it's not ready just yet. Let's look at the rotational axes. You can see that they are all matching the world orientation, so we need to fix them next. All I'm going to do is use the Orient Joint tool. Just reset this. I want to have X pointing down the joint, so these default settings should work. So I'll just apply that. Now that has worked and X is now orientated so it's pointing to the next joint. The problem is the Y axis is all over the place and we need to keep things consistent. All we need to do is update the settings. So secondary axis is set to Y which is right. Secondary axis world orientation is currently set to Y2 so it's trying to make the joint's Y axis point up. This is why we are getting this issue. Ideally, we want ours to all point forwards, so in this case, down the z-axis. If we apply that, you will see all the joints are now pointing the same way. So y is now pointing forwards, and they all match. It's probably a good idea at this stage to rename these joints before we move on. Left scapula. left humerus, left radius, left carpus, and left metacarpus. Let's add some toes next. I'll duplicate the metacarpus. and position it here. Again, look at where the actual joint should be placed in the paw. I'll create another copy and move that in front and down a little. OK, now let's update the hierarchy. So this should be parented to this one and this to the metacarpus. I'll make this a little smaller so we can see better. Now let's reposition these. Might be able to see better from the top view. I'll switch to wireframe. OK, looks about right. So duplicate these and move them over to the opposite side. Looks OK. OK, we need another copy now for the outer toe. And finally, another for the inner toe.
Now we need to fix the orientations. So it's back to the Orient Joint tool. We can try the same settings we had before, which are ideal as we want the toes to match the leg setup. Because of the placement of these joints though, we may have some issues. Okay, now let's reset the end joints so they match the orientation of their parents. So you see, the middle toes look good because the y-axis is pointing up. The problem is the outer toes don't, so they won't rotate correctly when animated. In this instance, we want to go back to the original settings, so secondary axis world orientation needs to be set to Y. This will force the Y axis to point up. That's better. Just reset the end joints. You've probably noticed that I left the metacarpus joint matching the world orientation. I've done this for a number of reasons, the main one being that it will mean the controls will be orientated to the world too. This gives you a nice, clean rig, which will be better for the animator to use, plus it reduces the risk of the joints flipping. Now back to renaming. It's difficult sometimes to know what to call these. Let's go with the proper names rather than inner or outer. So left front pinky, because remember we will also have rear toes too, so we don't want names clashing. And call its child the same but with tip on the end. The inner toe we will call index, like the finger. We will call this one ring. And finally, this one, middle. So these are just going to be set up like a hand. OK, just check we got all those. So that's one leg built. All we're going to do is mirror this to create the opposite side. First we need another joint. So create a new joint at the world root again using X to snap it to the grid. You don't need to reposition this joint but I'm going to because we will use it again later. I'll just move it so it's between the shoulder blades. And rename it to shoulders. Parent the scapular joint to this new joint. We need the shoulder joint because it will act as a pivot point for when we mirror the joints. Although I recently discovered that you don't actually need a pivot point joint, it will actually mirror across the world axis anyway. But this is just the traditional way that I've always done it, so I'm just going to continue. Open the mirror joints tool. In search for put L underscore and in replace with put R underscore so the tool will rename the joints for you as it mirrors them. 
mirror across should be set to YZ. So it flips over the Z axis and mirror function needs to be behavior. Apply that to mirror the joints. That's now used the shoulder joint as the reflection plane, as mentioned earlier. You will also see that the orientations are different on the right leg. X is pointing away from the joint and Y is backwards now. This isn't a problem, in fact it's exactly how we want it. If I rotate the scapular joints, you will see that they mirror each other's movements, which makes life easier for the animator. I'm going to unparent the legs from the shoulders now. Unlike a game rig, we can work on each section independently, so we don't need a single skeleton. OK, let's create the hind legs. I'm just going to duplicate the front leg and use it as a base. First, I'm going to change my manipulator, so I'm working in world space. So, I just hold down Ctrl and Shift, and I can now quickly select world from the marking menu. This just means I can move the copy back and it will stay level, so the paw is on the same plane. What I want to do is get the foot joints into position first. This just means that we don't have to rebuild the whole paw joints, we can just use these. OK, now we can work our way up and reposition the rest. Now we can't just move the joints which are higher up the chain because they will move the children, like this. Instead we need to press insert. This allows us to move the joints independently. So we can move this one here, and this here. Again, refer to the reference for the right positions. I'm only moving them along the Y and Z axis, so up and forwards. I want to keep the leg as straight as possible when viewed from the front. That's the main joints in position. I'll just delete this one. Actually, I need to unparent it first. I'll just double check the paw. Because we move the joints, the orientations will be off, so they need attention next. First, I'll unparent the paw so I don't edit those joints. Actually, I need the metacarpus joint, so instead, I'll just duplicate the paw. Move it out of the hierarchy and hide it to keep it safe. I can then delete the toes, so we are left with the main leg. All I need to do then is use the Orient Joint tool again to fix the orientations. I'll just change this to Z, so the Y axis points forwards. So that's the leg fixed, and we needed the metacarpus joint, so the carpus knew how to orient itself. Now we can bring back our paw and parent it to the leg again. Now we rename again to match the correct skeleton joints. So, femur, fibula, and metatarsus. It looks like we have two joints with the same name now, so we should rectify that.
Let's just add front to the metacarpus names. And we can add rear to the back ones. It's good to make sure all the names in your rig are unique, or you could end up with some systems becoming confused, especially if you're using scripts or other tools later. Let's also update the toes, changing front to rear. Actually, we should use the search and replace tool. That's much easier. Now all we need to do is mirror the back leg. Let's parent it to the shoulder joint and use that as the pivot point again. All we do now is use the mirror joints tool with the same settings as before. And there we go, the right hind leg done. Right, let's unparent that from the shoulder joint. And now hide the rotational axes. There we go, the four base legs built. Maybe we should refer to these as driver legs instead, considering what they're going to do. Let's look at the spine next. I'll switch to the side view. We can keep the shoulder joint and duplicate that. Let's move this down to be the root joint. About there should do. Let's call this root. Create another copy and move this between the other two. Call this spine underscore mid. Let's create another joint now to go between these. Call this spine underscore lower. Finally, duplicate this joint and move it up so it's between the upper joints. I want to make sure these joints are exactly between the others, so I'm going to use a point constraint. I'll select the outer joints first and then the middle one. And constrain them, but with maintain offset disabled. This will force the joint to be exactly between the others. I can do the same with the upper joints too. There we go. Now I can delete the point constraint nodes. I'll just move them up slightly to create more of an arc. And now let's parent them to create the spine hierarchy with the root joint being the parent. Now the spine joints are in place, we need to check the orientations. Let's select the hierarchy and make the rotational axes visible. We can see that Z is pointing down the axis and we want to use X, so let's update that. Open the orient joint tool again. This time we want Y to point up. So change secondary axis world orientation to Y. With the root joint selected, click apply. Okay. Actually, we could just use the toggle local axis visibility button to hide the rotational axes again. It will be quicker than going through the menus. Okay, let's do the tail next. And we will be doing pretty much the same as we did with the spine. Duplicate the root joint and then delete its children. We just want the one joint. With this area, we're going to place a joint on each edge loop. 
This will make it deform and bend better, plus give the animator more control over the look of the tail. Although thinking about it, this is just the driver skeleton, so we could get away with every other edge loop. We could possibly reduce it more, but let's see how it holds up later on in the rig. We will actually be using the ribbon, and that will have a joint on each edge loop instead. So it makes sense for us to just use the joints in the ribbon, and not in the driver part of the skeleton. Now let's parent those to create the chain. Remember to do it in the opposite order to the spine. The base of the tail needs to be the parent. And again, we adjust the orientations. Let's leave the settings the same as we did for the spine. This time we will use the button in the Orient Joint tool to make the rotational axes visible, so we can check them. Looks good. We have an extra joint here, so let's get rid of that. And reset the tip of the tail using Orient Joint to World. Okay, good. Oh, I should have hidden the rotational axes while I had the window open. I will just quickly hide them now. Hmm. Looking at the tail, I'm thinking I might change the flow of the joints. So they are closer to the middle of the model. I'll just adjust those now. And update the rotational axes too. So that's the main driver joints created for the body. Now let's look at adding them for the neck and head. I'll create a new joint. I like to add joints this way because they are created with world space orientations and in some cases this is the orientation I need. It also means I'm working with clean joints from the start. This will be the base of the neck. So looking at the reference, it should be around here. I'll add another one around here. And another one at the base of the skull. It's important that this is placed exactly where the head needs to rotate. It shouldn't be down here because the head will pivot from the wrong point. Again, check the reference since you aren't sure. Remember that some of these joints are just placeholder so we can change their positions later if needed. I'm just going to move this joint a bit more, so it's more in the centre. Now I need a jaw joint. OK, that will do. And let's add in the eye joints next. I like it when I'm given a model where the eye geometry is perfectly aligned like this, so you can easily see the central point on the wireframe. So with the eye, we need to make sure it's aligned from the front too. Again, we can use the wireframe to help find the central point on the sphere. OK, now let's rename some of these. So, head. Jaw, left eye, and 
neck and neck mid. And let's parent these to create the hierarchy. We now need to correct the orientations in the neck. I'm going to leave the head joint like this though, in world space, as that's already perfectly aligned. Select the neck joints and open the orient joint tool. Just disable this. I'm going to also disable orient child of selected joints, so we don't affect the head. Although thinking about it, the head joint won't be affected anyway, because it's the end joint. Let's turn on the axes so we can see them. And we just need to make sure Y is pointing up. So let's change this to Y. Okay, those are fixed. Now let's parent the jaw to the head. And the eye to the head. Just hide those axes now. With those parented, we can simply use the mirror joints tool again to create the right eye. What's next? Ah yeah, the ears. I'll just duplicate the eye to start us off. And move this over. We need it to be in the middle. Just move it down slightly. Okay, let's call this left ear base. Let's add two more joints in here. And reparent them. And also rename them. Call this tip and this mid. I might actually adjust it so it follows the flow of the ear a little better. Okay, that's better. Now to correct the orientations again. There we go. And reset the tip joint so it's correctly aligned. Oops, accidentally reset them. There we go. I just wanted to hide the orientations again. So let's mirror these across for the right ear. So that's it, all the main driver joints are in place. Ah, we forgot to rename the tail. I'll just quickly rename the joints here. And add root to this joint. And tip to this one. Just check everything else. Okay, yeah, looks good. Just to keep things tidy, I'll group the joints. and rename that to Driver Skeleton. So I'll just have one last look over this. I'll make the ear joints a little smaller, but this is just a cosmetic thing though.
Looking at the jaw, I think we need to update that. I'll quickly add a joint to mark the end of the jaw. Somewhere around here. And rename that to jaw tip. And make sure it's parented to the jaw and not the head. I'll rename the jaw joint too. With the tip jaw in, I can now adjust the orientation of the jaw. Again, with Y pointing up. OK, so that didn't look like it changed, but it's because my manipulator is in world space. I'll just hold Ctrl and Shift and change it back to object space. There we go, we can see it's aligned now. Finally, just reset the tip joint. OK, there we have the base driver skeleton. There's a couple of things I want to go back though and correct, which I just noticed with the eye joints. You see, these need to be perfectly aligned with the eyeball wireframe, and they aren't. They just need pulling back slightly. Ah, there's another issue. Looks like the orientations aren't correct on the right eye. OK, we will fix that next. I'll just switch to world space so I can move these back. That's better. OK, let's reset the orientation on the right eye. As you can see, it's inverted. This is because we mirrored it earlier, but didn't change the settings. It's an easy fix though. We just need to orient the joint to the world. OK, now both eyes rotate the same way. It's a bit of a rookie mistake, but it goes to show that even after all these years of rigging, even people like me make mistakes. It also shows why you should double check your skeleton before you move on. Speaking of which, before we do move on, there are a couple of things I always check with my skeletons. I'll just turn off wireframe. All I want to do is create a basic rotate plane IK handle on the legs. I'm just going to move this up and down to check how it bends. What I want is for it to bend backwards, so directly behind itself, which it does. This is because I made sure the legs were straight when viewed from the front, which means the pole vector will lie directly behind it. We don't want the legs to bend off to the side. That would be bad. So this is why I double check them just to make sure. I'll check the hind leg now. OK, looks good. I'll just go through and check the other joints now to see how they rotate. OK, great. So what happens if you're working on a rig and because of the way that the model is built, you can't have the joints perfectly aligned and straight when viewed from the front, or you can't have a slight bend in the elbow or the knee, which is going to help to dictate which way they will bend when you have IK applied? Well, there's actually a simple solution. So if we look at this example here, if I apply IK to this now, and then I move it, you will see that the elbow points off in a random direction. And this isn't ideal. Ideally, what we want is for the elbow to move directly behind the arm. 
Now all we need to do is before we add the IK, put a bend in the elbow and then right click on the joint and go to set preferred angle. So this is just going to tell Maya that this is the angle that we would prefer it to bend in. So with that done, if I apply the IK again, now as you can see, if I move it, the elbow is now moving directly behind the arm, which is perfect. So if you're having problems with which way your elbow or your knee is pointing when you add IK to it, simply use this method and use the set preferred angle option to dictate which way it should bend. One other area to keep in mind are the joint rotation orders. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here as I covered this in my fundamentals video. You can find a link in the description below and it's around the 10 minute mark in the video you want to be looking. Basically, the rotation order dictates which axes have priority over others and it's really important to think about these because using the wrong rotation order can result in bad rotations and gimbal lock. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have the rotation manipulator and over here the rotation order. If we rotate using the manipulator, actually let's change that to object space. OK, let's try again. If we rotate this joint, all the axes stay locked, so they remain the same distance apart. The problem is, this is basically a lie. Let me switch to gimbal instead. With this manipulator, we get a true idea of what each axis is doing and how the rotation order can help. One thing to remember with the rotation order is that it reads backwards. So in this case, with it set to the default of X, Y, Z, the Z axis has priority. So if I rotate the Z axis, the Y and X follow. So far, this looks the same as the other manipulator. Let's try another axis. So Y is next in the order of priority. As you can see, if I rotate that, it only affects the X axis. So problems arise when this rotates around so it meets the Z axis, so they are both on the same plane. And this is basically gimbal lock. The two axes are aligned, so cancel each other out in a way. So what this means for us is having to go through and think about what priority we need for each area of the dog. And this could even possibly be on a per joint level. If we look at this leg, for most of the time it's going to be rotated like this. So in this case, the Z axis needs priority because it will be used the most. The same with the back leg. So the way we set up our joint orientations has paid off because the default rotation order works well with these limbs. They may need to rotate and twist in the other directions, but it will only be slightly. If we check the tail, this will need to use Z primarily, but also Y so it can be wagged when he's happy. But again, the default settings seem to work well here. The same with the spine. And the neck. So luckily for us, we don't need to change anything so far, but it's something you should keep in mind with all your rigs. Well, we've come to the end of another video. Thanks for watching right to the end, and if you found this video useful, please hit that like button to show your support. While you're at it, you could also subscribe and enable notifications so you are kept up to date with future videos and community posts. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below or contact me through the Ant CGI Club Twitter account and I will try my best to reply. Alternatively, you could post them in the Ant CGI Club Discord server where I spend more of my time. You can find an exclusive invitation to join in the description below. Remember that you can also join the Ant CGI Club to help support future videos while also earning exclusive rewards. 
Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.